Hi, this is Teresa Alsop from the Sony Quilting Center again, and we are working on my great grandma's quilt. Um, and where we've gotten a few blocks done, and as I was quilting, I um, thought of some things that I forgot to tell you that you might want to know. So we're gonna come to this very last block that I just finished. And I don't know if you can see from the, um, now that it's quilted it, how crooked it is. But if you come and look up here on the screen, you can see how irregular these lines are. And by using multi-point, um, I did several multi-points. And so I was moving where this is right here where it kind of concaves in and then it flares out. Uh, at some of these places I was going like a fourth of an inch and doing several multi-points. And the more multi-points you do, the more consistent or correct you can get. And so you can see with this, even though that is such a concave um, area or line, I was able to stitch it pretty close to where I wanted it to. And then over here, you see how my stitching got onto my pink, my border, which is not what I would prefer. I would prefer it to be here in the ditch instead of on the, in the valley is what I call it. And this is kind of the mountain. Um, so what happened is as it was stitching, you get a little sinking in uh, and pulling of the fabrics. And also, if you are touching your poles and you lean on the poles, it shifts this material. Or if somebody comes over while you're quilting and leans on the poles and put their hands on it, it shifts that fabric. And so the area is then not in what I had originally said it was. And that's what happened. One of my um, employees came over and touched the fabric and not knowing this, it skewed that fabric out more than what it was before. And so that's why it was stitched on right here. So um, did you fire her? No, of course not. <laughs> it, things happen. So a um, couple of things about um, Pro Stitcher and while you're quilting. I always tell my customers that you are the artist of your, of your own quilt. Um, it doesn't matter if we had the same fabric, the same everything, and we put our quilt together. We're going to pick a little bit different. We're going to sew it a little different, and we're, nobody's going to have the same quilt. And quilting is the same way. When you use Pro Stitcher, you are going to be using your own method. There's more than one way to do what I've done. And as I was quilting these out, I found a couple of interesting things. Um, before I was saving my area because when I did my trace area and it stitched it out on my ditch, I thought you had to put a new block in so that you could skew it. And I wasn't thinking and I just pushed my modify skew and skew two and it did go into the orange. So I didn't have to re-plot out my block twice. I only had to do it once. I didn't have to save it. Um, when I had stitched it out, then I just brought my design and skewed it into the block, which is really nice. Another thing is I baselined this design and then resized it. What's really important is if I took this design, so I'm going to move it out and it's wonky because it was made to fit in here. And then I baselined it where it basically freezes it in that shape. If I now take this wonky design, make a new area and skew it into another weird block, it's gonna distort this design because it's not, it's already wonky to begin with. And so you always want to um, close this design and you do it because that one's selected, we're just gonna hit the selected. And when we're doing a new block, you always bring in a new, um, oops, I brought those up. So here is our design. You wanna bring the original design up to skew. You never wanna skew one that you have skewed wonkily and baselined it. Um, the other thing we want to talk about is some of the tools that we're using from Handy Quilter. This tool right here is a foot. It's a glide foot. 
Um, it's actually the Glide 2 foot, so it's a little shallower, and there's a bigger hole um, in there. And that um, is a great foot to use when you have weirdness on your quilt, excess fabric, maybe there's a hole in here. If you have a rigid foot and you're using your regular foot, it can get caught into a hole. Whereas a glide foot is going to just glide over any irregularities and not get stuck into something that's been hand sewn and there may be a gap in it. Then I can take it off, put a pin in it going horizontally so that when I take the quilt off, I can hand stitch a hole. Or if there's excess fabric or loose borders, then um, I can deal with that because the foot is going to glide over instead of being a rigid foot and pushing excess and then you'd have a crease in your fabric. So the glide foot is very helpful when you're working with older vintage quilts because there are some issues that you can fall into and it helps ease those out and doesn't cause other problems. The last thing is our settings. Um, when we went into Pro Stitcher and run, this pops up, verify our settings. And we, those settings change. We get to pick and choose what we're going to use when we're going to quilt the quilt. And so to get to our settings to change them, it's this little gear set right here. And we touch the gear and then we have all our different stitching come up. Um, right here is Opti Stitch. That is um, how fast and slow our stitching is going to come out. I found that I like it um, 40 to um, 40 right here, my acceleration. This is acceleration and deceleration is really what it's talking about. Going into a point and coming out of a point. Slowing down and speeding up. This is my constant speed, and that could be a little faster. If you're ever not in customize, you can they will just pop up and do what they what the design should be. I don't like to be in the non custom it's automatic choice because it goes a little fast for me, or sometimes it will pop up where this number is um really really low and this one is high and then you're going to have weird stitching so i found if i have my acceleration in the 40s and my speed between 60 and 80 that's when it stitches out the best for my um, liking um, if you have a lot of really curly designs it's helpful to um, have it on if we go into our touch screen, oops, I might have to exit that. I'm gonna cancel this, then we can go into our touch screen right here. And I have my big fingers, so we're gonna use um, a pen, maybe. Nope, it's not gonna let me do it. So we're just gonna continue on about settings. So go back into our settings. This is auto jump. Um, right now, my jump is set at six inches. I don't like to have my machine move on me. And what the jump means is it's going to jump from the last end point to the next start point. And I don't really like it to move. So I prefer to take it down to zero. Um, and then I'm just touching that block right here. Um, if something comes up, just exit it. And I put in zero and enter. So th basically what that means is my machine's not going to jump to anywhere or move anywhere unless I move it. My next is my stitches per inch and we can change the stitches per inch. I wanted it a little higher. Here's my tie offs and my pull up. But basically you can change those stitches depending on what type of quilting you're doing and as we do other quilts we will set our settings so that you can see because you change them and that's why it's so easy to get to is because you will change them depending on what type of quilts you're quilting um thank you for